Hello and welcome to Atomo Workshop. Today I'm going to be making Makoto Yuki Sword from Persona 3, Q, Q2, and the Smash Brothers costume. Uh, yeah, it's in a lot of games. Let's get started. To start the build, I needed a template. I couldn't find one online, so I made my own using Fusion 360. It's not the best program for this sort of work, but it is what I know and helps me keep things to scale and in proportion. I based my template mostly off this scale image of Makoto with the sword, the Smash Bros. Mii Fighter costume, and a fan creation. If you're interested in having this template, there is a link to my Etsy where you can pick it up for a couple of pounds in the description. The template is 1 to 1 scale, according to the SMT wiki Makoto Yuki is 5'7", so it worked out perfectly for me as that means I'm the correct height, but if you're taller or shorter than that, you might want to play around with the size. Anyway, back to the build. I wanted to make this out of foam as I typically make a lot of 3D printed objects and I wanted to set myself the challenge, but in order to make it out of foam I had to create a solid base to prevent any wobbling. To do just that, I made a core for the sword out of I think a 2cm wooden dowel to act as a base for the handle. This was marked off long enough to stick up into the guard and a little bit into the pommel and was cut with just a regular saw. The handle has a curve and taper to it, but the dowel was not thick enough to achieve the correct shape. So to build up the area, I wrapped the dowel in two layers of 2mm Polyprops craft foam. Though if you have access to 4mm foam, then by all means use that, I just didn't have any to hand. You could also use 5mm or more technically, but that would require more sanding in the end to get it to the correct size and shape. My glue of choice for this kind of job is contact cement as it creates an extremely strong and long lasting bond. All you have to do is spread it on the two faces you want to have meet up and then let it get set up for 5-10 to 10 minutes after that and then when that's all dry and ready to go you bring them together and the bond is instant and incredibly sturdy. I then came in with a rotary tool and a sanding drum to carve in the correct shape, making sure to go slow and keep referring to my template and reference images. As it turns out, using foam to build up the handle rather than having it all out of wood actually ended up being a benefit as it was easier to sand and left a really nice sort of squishy feel to the sword handle in the end. I then repeated essentially the exact same process again in order to create the round area under the guard, leaving me with this adorable little stick. As every piece beyond this point would block the dowel, this was as far as I could go without adding in the final piece of the core, a metal rod. This was required to go from almost the tip of the pommel all the way to just before the tip of the blade, and after cutting the correct length of the rod, I drilled a hole in the center of the dowel and glued the metal rod inside the hole. I would recommend using Gorilla Glue for this as it will expand and fill any gaps if the hole is a little wide or just a little bit imperfect. So it's been a day and hopefully you can see there the glue has nicely filled in and spread out out of the top and it feels really nice and sturdy it's not going anywhere um, and I feel like I got the size pretty good I mean when I hold it out um, and compare it to when Makoto Yuki holds it I, it appears to be about the right size so um, looks like the wiki was about right on his height um, next up is I need to do this uh, hilt guard uh, thing um, and I have a plan for it. My plan was to start creating the basic form of the center part of the guard by stacking multiple layers of foam together. I used four layers of one centimeter polyprops craft foam for this and I suggest roughly cutting out four rectangles that are larger than the final piece and gluing them together with more of that same contact cement. As they are cut out roughly, it is then easier to cut and sand back the block to be just right as opposed to stressing over making sure four perfectly cut out pieces are glued perfectly together. While I'm talking about polyprops foam, I want to briefly discuss the different options you have on the site. The options are quite wide. There are like four or five different brands. So what do you get? Well, the standard is craft foam and it's a pretty, pretty decent option really. It's a little squishy and not particularly rigid over wider spans, but it's cheap. So it's really good if you're making a lot of stuff and uh, I find it works quite well. You'll see I use it predominantly for the, the sword, but that's just because I had it to hand and I want to get rid of it. What I prefer to use is CF150 foam. CF150 foam is a lot less squishy and a lot more rigid and I find it just works better for everything. I really really like it. Um, as you can see to my left and your right, I have some armor here I've been working on. This is Akira Kanoe's armor from Persona 5 The Phantom Strikers. I've just been working it out piece by piece. Um, on the very early stages, I haven't been filming it, but if there is interest I will happy, happily film it from now on. Um, and that is entirely CF-150 foam and it has handled everything I can throw at it. It's just not particularly great at really, really tight corners. So if you see here, if I'm squishing that round, it's all right, but I'm really having to force it in order to get it to do that. This is like 
nothing. I'm, I'm really putting very little pressure on it and I'm getting those curves that I want. This is a lot more rigid. So you just gotta choose the right foam for what you're doing. For this, like I said, I'm mostly using craft foam as it's what I had to hand. However, if I were to choose, I would use the F-150. Moving on, after sanding the block to roughly the correct shape, including beveling edges I wasn't supposed to, dumbass, it was time to add the guard center to the handle. But like I mentioned before, the dowel is reaching into that area, so it needed removing. Using a 15mm Forstner drill bit, I added a hole to the center of the guard. After poking the metal rod through, I was able to slide it down the rod and CA glue it to the handle. Once the glue had dried, I decided to add the first of the inlay details. This could be done in a lot of ways, but I opted to try using some ABS plastic sheets. I went with this as I liked the depth it offered while also being more rigid. After marking out my template on the sheet, it was easy to cut with a hobby knife. You don't even have to cut all the way through though. Scoring it with the knife is enough to allow you to then bend it and snap it apart at the score lines. This was then glued on with CA glue, but my stupid bevel mistake came back to bite me and it became hard to stick down in the corners. Eventually I got it though and I repeated this on either side of the sword as it is identical. Once all dried and stuck down nicely, I cleaned it up a bit with my rotary tool and sanding germ again. Despite this low, again because of my stupid bevel, I had gaps in some spots that I would need to fill later. In hindsight, I should have just taken the time to make a new block of foam instead of continuing with this piece, but oh well. Next up was the rest of the guard. This was more of the same, sandwiching two layers of one centimeter craft foam together, cutting out the shape, cleaning it up with the rotary tool, and then creating some more ABS detail panels, then finally gluing them onto the body. I did run into one issue that I have since made adjustments for in the template though. The inset details are not quite the right shape in the template I'm using there. It required some on the fly trimming until I got the right shape. Essentially, I designed them too small. Like I mentioned though, I have updated the pattern to reflect this. And finally, I made the pommel by again layering three one centimeter craft foam blocks together, cutting out the shape, cleaning it up, more of those panels, and then gluing it on with CA glue. I did have to add a hole for the dowel to sit in, as well as push the metal rod in to get to the tip in order to prevent it from flexing. But by the end of all that, I had almost a finished handle. Although one side did look a little worse than the other since I was learning how to use this plastic sheet effectively. All that was left was the collar at the base of the blade, which was again more of the same, this time with 1cm craft foam stacked with 5mm CF150 foam, as I had run out of 5mm craft foam. But with that, the handle fabrication was entirely done. And now for the fun part, the blade. The blade was made of CF150 foam. To make this, I first cut out my template and marked it out on the foam twice. I then cut out just one of those marked out areas to the line. For the other side, I cut an oversized rectangle. This wastes a little more material, but as you'll see later, it allows for a much cleaner edge. Now I couldn't just go and glue this together willy nilly, the metal rod is thick enough that it would create a bulge in the center unless I made room for it. And made room for it I did, by turning my knife on an angle and going in two passes along the length of the blade to form a sort of triangle shaped cut, I was able to make a trench that would leave space for the metal rod. It's important that you mark out the area where you need to cut and have a sharp knife. Mine was a little dull so my cuts ended up messy, but they worked. This was done on both sides and then it was time for glue. Using contact cement again, I spread the glue on either side using my drawing as a rough guide on the rectangle piece and purposely going over the lines to give me some wiggle room. Once the two pieces were lined up and brought together, I was able to then trim away the excess from the rectangular side by using the nicely trimmed side as a guide. And with that, I had the basis for my blade, and I was ecstatic with how it came out. Finally, I had something that looked like a sword. I did have one small gap at the bottom where things didn't line up right, but off camera, I got a scrap of foam that was oversized, glued it in place with CA glue, and when it came to shaping time, I was able to trim it back. The next step was to clean up the edges of the blade to make sure they were perfectly clean and flush. Once done, I turned my attention to the center, or fuller, I think it's called. After liberating the part from the template, I marked it on the blade as well as some 2mm craft foam. This was then sanded on the top edges to give me a round over and then glued down to the blade with contact cement. Now at last comes the part I was secretly dreading, the blade edge. This step terrified me as there was no going back, one screw up and the blade would be ruined. But I pressed on and using my rotary tool I slowly sanded down the edges to create the cutting edge, as well as the point in the tip. 
This step went better than I expected, but did not come without its issues. The fuller had got nicked by the sanding drum and as a result looked a bit messy, so I decided to bevel the entire fuller to make it feather into the blade. I think this worked well enough, but if I were to do this again, I would just add the fuller later and avoid the trouble. But with that, all the fabrication was done. All the parts were on and ready for sealing and painting. Painting is perhaps my least favorite part of making. I always seem to find a way to screw it up somehow, but I was hopeful that I could get this done without a hitch. And what a fool I was. Before sealing and painting, the whole sword needed to have its gaps filled. This was done with polyfiller, which I have found work quite well for foam gaps in the past. Simply spread it on with a finger and then get some water and spread it out for a nicer finish. I did this all over the sword, waited for it to dry, and then sanded it smooth with some 400 grit sandpaper and ended up with a result I am pretty happy with. I then sealed the foam parts with a heat gun, being careful not to spend too much time in the areas with plastic sheets as they would get warped from the heat. The heat gun causes the pores of the foam to close up and thus gives you a smoother surface that takes the paint a lot better. If the gun is hot enough or if you use a blowtorch, you can also get rid of any small fuzzy pips left on the surface. This was all well and good for the foam parts, but to get a consistent finish across the whole sword, I needed to seal the whole sword in the same way. Enter Mod Podge. This stuff can seal foam and plastics very well and gives a prop a consistent finish if it has enough layers. I spread this with a sponge brush to minimize brush strokes as Mod Podge is quite sticky and would leave a lot of texture if unchecked. I ended up coating the whole sword with four coats of this and then also primed the sword with a mop brush and some Polyprops Hex Acrylic Paint in Black. I spread this all around and gave the sword two good coats to help the later layers stick nicely. This, however, spelled the beginning of the end. The first issue of many I fought through, this was the cheap brushes I was using. As I was spreading the paint out, bristles were coming off and getting stuck in. While I was able to get the majority of them out with ease, some very small ones were harder to catch. But then came my biggest problem in this whole operation, my nemesis, my foe, the airbrush. Now I have a very limited understanding of the airbrush and as a result faced problem after problem when painting the sword. I believe it all comes down to a poor mixture ratio. I tried to thin some regular Vallejo paints to get the silver on, but it just came out all runny or not at all. I have heard I should aim for the consistency of milk, but I have rarely found that to work and I have had better luck when using Vallejo Airbrand and stuff which is meant for the job, but I didn't have any to hand. At first things seemed to be going well, the silver paint for the blade was laying on nice enough and progress was good, but eventually the airbrush just stopped pumping out paint, or I ran out of mixed up paint, or the mixture was too thin down and came out basically like water. Eventually I gave up on this approach due to failure after failure and having to try and clean off the paint from the blade. If anyone has good tips for airbrushing, please let me know what I'm doing wrong. While I left my silver paint failure to fully dry, I turned my attention to the handle portion. This was to be in two shades of gold, a lighter gold on the top surface and a darker, more brass-like gold in the deep spots. I opted to brush this on instead and cover the area with the darker brass first. This went a lot better and I started to like what I was seeing again. When this dried, I was able to then come in with my gold color and simply brush on the top surfaces to get the final finish. The color difference is subtle, but there and I am glad I took the extra step. Then at last my silver nightmare had dried and I could come in and fix the paint. But this is where the final painting problem reared its ugly head. As I began brushing on my silver, things were going well. Again, it was covering nicely and I started to see the end of the tunnel, but then my paint was like, I'm about to ruin this man's whole career, and completely ran out, just one coat away from completion. This left me with a mostly covered blade, but slightly patchy. Eventually I will come in and touch this up, but for now, I decided to just leave it and move on. The final painting step was the fuller, which was mercifully kind and went by without issue. When it was dry, I taped off the silver with masking tape and brushed on the lighter gold color along the fuller. Then before it was fully dry, removed the tape and was left with my painted sword at long last. There wasn't going to be any weathering here, so this was the final step. The absolute final touch I wanted to make on this was a wrap on the handle. Even though it is not seen in any reference images, I think it adds an extra layer of detail to the sword and helps legitimize it a bit. Besides, this is a PS2 game and the sword is kind of just randomly seen here and there and you never really see the handle, so I think it's okay. To add this wrap, I used a black hockey tape, which is an extremely sticky cloth tape, and did a basic spiral along the entire shaft of the handle. So final thoughts on the sword. I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. I think it uh, could have gone better obviously with the uh, silver paint especially, but um, 
as it was my first foam sword build I think it also could have gone a lot worse it's a really good size it feels really nice in my hand and it goes well with the cosplay but aside from that thank you very much for watching the video if you enjoyed the video please let me know in the comments maybe leave a like and subscribe all that youtube -y good stuff thank you very much for watching uh, I will leave you now with some footage with the sword and my cosplay finally together at last.